วัสดีผู้เข้าร่วมอบรมออนไลน์อินไซต์เทรนนิ่งทุกท่านนะคะวันนี้เรากลับมาพบกันอีกนะคะแล้วก็ครั้งนี้จะเป็นเซสชัน3แล้วก็เป็นเซสชันสุดท้ายแล้วนะคะแล้วก็ทางทางผู้จัดหวังว่าการจัดอบรมอินไซต์เทรนนิ่งออนไลน์ของเราจะให้ประโยชน์กับท่านทุกๆท,ท่านนะคะทั้งบุคลากรทั้งก็คณาจารย์แล้วก็นักศึกษาที่ให้ได้เข้ามาร่วมอบรมในครั้งนี้นะคะตอนนี้ก็ท่านดรลินก็น่าจะพร้อมแล้วนะคะที่จะให้ความรู้กับพวกเราอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะคะ Hello ดร์ลิน Hello Good morning Good morning everyone สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ So are you ready Yes Okay <laughs> everyone so, is. Shall, shall we start The s e s s i o n e t r e e Yeah Thank you So please okay. okay Good afternoon everyone Uh, welcome back for those of you who have joined us in the previous two webinar sessions on insights. So for today's uh, webinar, we are focused uh, again on insights, but this time round, uh, it will be focused. It will be more around the researcher evaluation. How you can uh, create a profile for yourself as a researcher, and how do you um, compare yourself or between two different researchers? Which one is performing better than the other? For example. Okay. So my presentation today will take about an hour. Um, so if you have any questions, just type those questions into the chat box as per usual, and then we can uh, uh, I can answer those as we go through the session. Okay. And also because today is the final webinar session uh, of this series, if you have any questions pertaining to the previous two webinar sessions, uh, just raise those questions as well. Okay. Um, so the, just a recap for the first webinar, we were going through how you can use insights to pull out uh, institution related uh, data uh, around research performance. And then for the second webinar, we were talking more about how to identify collaborators uh, and be strategic in choosing who you can, should be collaborating with for your research area. Okay. So let me just share my slides. Let me give me a, a, a few seconds, okay, just to pull out the chat box so I can see this simultaneously. Okay, I, I see that there's already one question that came up. How long did it take for you to learn how to manipulate the data? So to uh, answer that question, it took me maybe um, uh, intensively, maybe about one month. Okay, uh, that's intensively using it. But uh, what I've been showing you for the past uh, two, three webinars uh, are just the surface level uh, information. So that would help to get you started on uh, retrieving data uh, and, and a very quick way to extract needed information. But for you to understand how to um, say, evaluate uh, entities or even choosing uh, institutions to benchmark against, it comes with experience. So if you have, um, but if you need any help with that regard, you can always come back to me and um, seek my uh, opinions or even my help to guide you along specific use cases. I'll be happy to work that out with you. Okay. So like I said, um, how long how long do I think someone would take to learn? Okay, it depends on how enthusiastic you are on bibliometrics. But what I've shown you will be good enough uh, for basic researchers uh, to extract and needed information to make better decisions. Okay. Now for today's agenda proper, uh, I'll be going through some of the uh, key metrics that you should be using to make, measure a researcher's performance. Okay. And I will also be highlighting some of the useful features and functionalities uh, within Web of Science that can help you build a better pro uh, researcher profile for yourself, right? So can I just check? It, has the recording started, Miss um, Kanita? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so before we begin, uh, I just wanted to highlight some of the uh, most common ways of assessing impact of a researcher. Uh, this is specific around the use of bibliometrics. So there are a few different 
uh, indicators or measurements that uh, a lot of entities or actually institutions like to use to measure the performance of their researchers. Okay? And I've categorized them into three um, types. So the first type would be those that are counting absolute numbers. And this would be um, specifically around measure, measurement of productivity. So most of the time, the absolute numbers are specific to productivity levels and citation counts. So if you're talking about number of papers, this would be referring to number of documents or research papers published in specific uh, journals and specific fields or, uh, and, or, or even uh, open access number of documents. Okay, so those are absolute numbers. Then you have the time cited. So time cited will be just a measurement of how many times that particular article has been cited. And then if you're talking about uh, a set of documents, then that will be the total citations of those documents. Okay. Now, the benefit of this in absolute numbers is that it's easy to track and it's easy to measure. However, it, it has its cons. So one of the um, challenges of using this absolute numbers as a form of measurement is that you can't immediately compare one specialization against another specialization. Okay, so take for example, if you have uh, a set of papers from engineering, okay, let's say triple E. Okay, if you compare that set of documents in terms of citation counts with the same number of papers in say uh, arts and humanities, okay, then the arts and humanities papers tend to have very much lower citation counts. But does that mean that the arts and humanities papers are not impactful? No, not really, because you can't compare them because you have not um, normalized them so that you can be sure that you're comparing them like for like. Okay? Because you have to take into consideration the uh, nuances of the citation um, uh, characteristics of that specialization. So, and those hard sciences, hard sciences papers like medicine, engineering, they all tend to have very high citation counts. In contrast, those that are in arts and humanities, social sciences, those tend to have lower citations. So in order to make a more fair comparison between the two, okay, it is very important to find um, some other indicators to substantiate this profile. So then in comes the second category that we have, which is comparing like for like, which is to make sure that you are comparing the same specialization uh, together. Okay. So this is where we talk about things like H-index, okay? the say H-index, citation impact, and as well as journal impact factor. So these are um, these indicators allow you to compare uh, researchers within their own specialization. All right. But of course, uh, these indicators, you need to take them in consideration of the same, same uh, specialization. You cannot compare them outside of that same specialization. Okay. And now that is where you bring in your normalization um, category of indicators. So what is normalization? Normalization is uh, recalculating the indicators into a form which allows for clear comparison um, of researchers, irregardless of the specialization that they are from, irregardless of their publication year, irregardless of their um, uh, document type. So we have on insights a few different types of normalized indicators. And the first one is your normal category normalized citation impact. So what we do is we will group all the documents in one specialization together. We will then split them into different years of publication and we will measure the citation impact of each and every document. So with this normalization method, we will then be able to compare, say, uh, uh, we can measure that, that uh, indicator called CNCI, Category Normalized Citation Impact. And this indicator is measuring the impact of the papers normalized by publication year, 
normalized by specialization and normalized by document type. So what does this mean to you? It will mean that if, for example, I'm looking at a researcher from engineering, if his CNCI is above 1.0, okay, it will mean that his performance is above global average. Okay, so 1.0 is always the global average impact. Okay, if uh, another researcher comes along from arts and humanities and that researcher's CNCI is also above 1.0, then that means that researcher is also uh, performing above global impact. So whether researcher A and researcher B who performs better, it will become more easier to compare because now you just have to look at the CNCI as one of the um, indicators to create this profile for the researchers. The percentile indicators, so we have uh, percentiles associated to each and every document. So let's say, for example, um, one paper has citations of uh, 30. Okay. Citation count of 30 without its context does not really tell you whether that paper is a high performing paper or not. Okay? So for insights, what we have done is we have uh, categorized all these documents, all the papers in one specialization and by year. And we will associate a percentile to that paper uh, based on its citation in that category. Okay? So the percentile will be in the range of zero to 100. So any paper that is above us, uh, any paper that is performing, say around 99 to 100 percentile, it means that that document's citation has put it in the top 1% of its category. So that is just one example of how we measure percentiles. Then for ESI highly cited papers, these are specific um, documents uh, in the hard sciences. So this would be the uh, science papers, and they would be given a highly cited paper rank if their citations put them in the top 1% of their subject category. Okay. So given all these different types of bibliometrics uh, out there, you cannot just use one or the other. All these have to be used together to form a profile for this researcher so that you can uh, make a more clearer uh, judgment or evaluation of the performance of that researcher. I wanted to highlight a little bit more about the H-Index and some of the challenges it poses um, when you just use the H-Index to measure a researcher's uh, performance. Okay? Uh, I hope all of you are aware of how H-Index is calculated. Uh, it is basically a measurement of how many uh, based on the number of papers that have the same number of citations. So, for example, um, in this case, this is a H-index of 23 because 23 of those papers have um, uh, 23 citations. Okay? So, this is just a, a simplistic calculation of a H-index just to give you an idea. But when you put it into context of measuring one researcher against another, if both researchers have a H index of 23, okay, how are you going to define who is better than the other or which, which one has more better performance? Okay? Because H index doesn't really tell you the, the researchers, um, how to say, the career lifespan. So where in which, at which point of career he or she is right now, that has not been discussed using H index at all. So I'm going to give you an example of why is it important to not just use one indicator to, to compare researchers. Okay? So let's look at these two researchers on the screen. You have researcher A and researcher B. Both of them have around 60, 60 plus publications, uh, both almost the same number of citations in total uh, and the same H-index. So if you ignore the, the purple columns, okay, if you ignore the purple columns, it is going to be very difficult for you to see which of these researchers is better performing because they have similar numbers of publications, citations, and H index. So, however, they might be conducting uh, research in different fields, 
and even different history of publications. So all these have not been taken into consideration. But if you use a normalized indicator like the CNCI and the journal, uh, journal normalized citation impact, it gives you a better understanding of their performance. Okay, so I'm going to give uh, explain a little bit more about these indicators. Okay, so we'll take this column first, which is CNCI, Category Normalized Citation Impact. It will mean that for researcher A, in his own category, he is performing 1.3 times better than the global um, uh, than his global peers. Okay, so this researcher is performing 1.3 times better than his global peers in that same research category. For researcher B, he is CNCI 0.45. This would mean that he is performing less than global average or left uh, below his global peers. Okay. So this CNCI is calculated based on the publications in that specialization. For JNCI, Journal Normalized Citation Impact, this indicator is calculated based on his performance in journals that he published in. Right? So this is also a normalized indicator where 1.0 is the global average. And in this case, researcher A, for all the journals that he has been publishing in, he is performing 1.8 times better than his peers. And the same goes for researcher B, it's 0 0.72, which is below 1.0. So he is performing below his global peers. Okay. So I hope this gives you a, a glimpse at, as to what additional indicators would help you make better evaluations of researchers' performance. So on insights, the tool that you have been going through for the past um, two webinars. Okay. Within Insights itself, there is a researcher and an analysis um, portion. So it's under uh, researchers, where you, if you are going to search for a particular researcher, so I've taken an example here, um, Professor Derek, Derek okay, from Mahidon. So I've, you can choose to see the Web of Science author record. Okay, um, why did I pick this particular option? So this is something that you need to take note of. Within uh, researcher e evaluations, there are um, many, many vari variations of authors' names. Okay, so what we have done is we have grouped these into uh, author records, and I will explain this in my upcoming slides. So if you want a more clean record of the researcher's publications, always use Web of Science author record as your um, ID type. Okay. So if you can go to researchers, search for author record, search for the author's name, then you will be able to extract information about the author's publications. So we have uh, individual level um, indicators that will help you to gauge that researcher. But at the same time, if you click on to his published documents of 184 documents, for each and every document he has published, there is an associated percentile in that subject area. Okay, so which means to say, for example, here, this particular paper he has published garnered 400 citations, okay, and his CNCI is 23 times above his global peers, JNCI is five times above his global peers. For percentile, that means for this particular document, his citations put his paper in the top 1% of publications in that subject category. Right? So this percentile, is, it becomes a very good way to measure the performance of each and every paper of the researcher based on the citation against the others in the same subject category. So for the percentile calculation, how we do this is we compare the documents by year and category and document type. So for example, on this particular graph here, um, this is a 2015 doc set of documents. So only documents published in 2015 in the research field of organic chemistry. What we've done is we've 
plot the citation counts and the number of articles into the respective axis. If you see and plot based on citations alone, you, can, you will see that it's very difficult to measure these documents ac um, accurately in terms of performance. However, if you put them into a percentile range, okay, so meaning you, you put all the uh, documents into in order of citation counts, and then you take, uh, say, 10 citations is 50 sec is puts it at the 52nd percentile, it makes it easier to see the performance of those papers. All right. So if you need more details of what the how the percentiles are calculated and how to interpret this um, more, okay, there is a white paper that we have produced for this um, measurement. So you can click here to view the white paper. But the percentile associated to each document is plotted against the author record being plot that we have on Web of Science. Okay, so later on, I'll be showing you how you can claim your own author profile on Web of Science. And within your own author profile, you will be able to see this beam plot. Okay, so this beam plot essentially takes in all the percentiles of the documents that have been published. So for, for each researcher, each of their profile, they will have an author being plot from ranging from most recent 10 years up to um, his own, his full career. So each of these purple dots on the screen, each of these purple dots represents a publication. Okay, so for this particular author, he has published a paper in 2012 that is around, uh, let's say, 96 percentile. Okay, so this, this document citations puts it in the 96th percentile. And then for each year, all these are his publications for that year. So the green circle represents the median for the documents published in that particular year. So the benefit of plotting this is that you can see for this researcher, his performance has started below 50%. In terms of percentile, but over the years, he has kind of improved and now he is around uh, 80th percentile in 2018. Okay, so this graph allows you to raise questions on why certain researchers' performance has um, changed over time and therefore gives you a better um, picture of this researcher. Okay. Because for this particular example on the screen, it may come from somebody who has a page index of maybe 20. And if you want to compare him against another researcher, using this author impact beam plot becomes more um, uh, a more fair uh, assessment. Okay. So I'm just going to just quickly show you in this uh, screenshot here. Uh, just a close up of what it means for each of the nodes. So the little dots. So if you click on the purple dots, this pick this um, call out button, call out box will appear. And this is saying that this particular paper has been published in 2003. This is performing in the 94th percentile. This is the article you can click through to view. And then this is the number of citations. Okay. And one thing to note, if you see that these dots become longer, okay, the round dots are represent one publication. Then if it becomes a longer dot like this one, this one in 2004, it means that there's two publications in this same percentile. Okay. So a few things to take note of for the author record being plot is that it covers the um, it includes ESCI data in, into it, but the uh, publications that are included would be articles or reviews only. And the percentiles are calculated for publications back to 1980. So if there's any researcher ha that has publication be before 1980, it will not be part of the author impact being plot. Okay. Okay, so um, that's 
basically the session the section that I wanted to cover around using bibliometrics to measure uh, a researcher's performance. So it does not just involve uh, the H index, citations, and publication counts, but if you incorporate the CNCI, GNCI, as well as the author impact beam plot and percentiles, that will again give you a better um, uh, profile of the researcher and clearly list down his areas of strength um, as well as his um, current state of uh, research. Okay. Now, the next part that I'm going to go into will be showcasing your research. So as a researcher, yes, it's great to have uh, uh, good performing numbers uh, behind uh, that, that your institutions can measure you on, okay? but it is very important to showcase your research to the public, especially in today's time when none of us can travel for conferences, we can't interact with other researchers quite as effectively. Okay? So other collaborators will rely on uh, online resources to be able to judge or see where, how, who are you as a researcher. Okay? So that's why it is so important to make sure that the, your profile is searchable, your profile is clean. Okay? So some of the uh, main users of showcasing your research is that it allows you to get noticed by your potential collaborators. It also helps to enhance the reputation of yourself, your department, as well as Mahidon University. Okay? At the same time, it will also help to demonstrate the breadth of your research to hiring communities, committees, funding agencies, and tenure evaluators. Okay? And perhaps identify researchers for mentorship or collaboration. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you are the correct person that they are noticing and you're not mixed up with someone else. And why is that so? Okay. It's purely because of author ambiguation. Okay. Many of us, uh, many of the researchers are, are restricted in terms of say, um, the number of characters that they can put into their um, author names. Okay. So when that, when that happens, okay, especially when you have very common Chinese names, for me, I have the I'm Chinese, but um, I have the benefit of having a very unique uh, spelling for my name. So my, my surname doesn't have a vowel. Uh, my, I have a hyphen in my first name. So it makes my name very unique. Okay? But if you have a very common um, first name and last name, for example, like Li or Wang or Chen, okay? you, you might be competing against other uh, researchers that have the same uh, name abbreviation as you. So for, I think in, for Thailand, for Thailand, you have the benefit of very unique names as well. So um, that issue might not be as bad, <laughs> right? But ultimately we want to make sure that we disambiguate all authors' names and that's what we do on Web of Science. So on Web of Science, we rely on an algorithm to group similar author names together. Okay? And this is based on the abbreviations of the author's name together with their affiliation, as well as the specialization that they are publishing in. So we group all these together into what we call the author record. And each uh, author within Web of Science is able to claim that author record for themselves. And this author record is what we call an example of the author profiling system. And why is there a need to do so? Because there are many entities within the research uh, ecosystem that requires uh, a very clean author uh, information. Okay? The first one would be for individuals like yourselves as researchers. You need to make sure that you're able to quickly find mentors, quickly find uh, and vet collaborators. Okay? And of course, it's to showcase your own research accurately. For research producing institutions like Mahidon University, it is very important because it allows your, you to showcase your researchers to the international research community. Okay? It will then help you to better demonstrate return on investment to the public as well, so that they are clear to, and able to see who is producing the research within those organizations. For research funders, it is very important when they are recruiting grant reviewers, for example. So if you are very um, experience, make sure that you're showcasing your, in, your 
um, experience in your research profile so that the research funders are able to contact you for to share um, your experience. For scholarly publishers, they use a clean profile to review uh, the publication records of authors. They also use um, pro author profiles to look for potential editors or editorial board members, as well as uh, reviewers for the manuscripts. And then the most important ones are the, actually the librarians and the administrators within the university, and they want to make sure that they are able to quickly um, report clean data to the management to show the return on the return on research investments. Okay. So on Web of Science, as I mentioned, we have the Web of Science author record that you can quickly retrieve for all the authors. Okay. Uh, if they have a, a unique author record already, they will also be given a research, uh, Web of Science researcher ID. And this becomes a unique ID that goes along with the researcher. Um, we are able to link with ORCID. So if you have an ORCID ID, you can also synchronize this with your ORCID um, profile. To claim the profile, I will demonstrate this later on. But to claim the author record on Web of Science, what you need to do is do a quick search of your author name in the author search. Uh, there will be records available, so there could be one, uh, more than one. So in this case, there's two Thomson JRs. Uh, if you, you are the Thomson J from Cornell University, select that first one, and that becomes your author record. You proceed to claim. And once you have claimed your profile, this is what it would look like. Okay. There will be a link to a public profile, which is available on Publons. Okay. So Publons is the public facing profile uh, from Web of Science. Okay. Um, but this record that you're seeing on the screen sits behind a subscription. So only Web of Science users can see this profile. Okay. So the record in Web of Science allows um, users to see which organization you're from, what are your other published themes, how many publications have you published, um, as well as other author metrics. So in my earlier slides, I mentioned about the author impact theme plot. This is also where the author impact theme plot summary is. Okay? And for example, Jeremy Thompson, his performance is a, uh, for, for his whole career is around the 50th percentile. Okay? And this together with the citation metrics like H-index, uh, total citations, and also the authorship gives you a clear profile of that researcher. Okay. So we are also integrating this together with um, the review uh, experience that the researchers might have. So once you have claimed your author record, you are able to maintain that record on Publons by incorporating your peer review work that you have done for journals. You are also able to put in your editorial um, work that you have done with uh, major journals, and this becomes your full public profile available. If you are using ORCID, if you want to integrate this together with ORCID, there is a way to link between the two. So if you're on ORCID, uh, from your ORCID ID, there will be a link to Publons and you can link out to Publons and uh, synchronize. So how does ORCID researcher ID, Publons and Web of Science author records work? Okay. So I wanted to just make sure that I clarify this clearly for everyone. Okay. So on Web of Science, for Web of Science users, you will be claiming your Web of Science author record. Okay, so this author record sits behind a subscription. So only users of Web of Science can see this author record. This is synchronized together with your public profile, which is a Publons profile. Okay, and this profile on Publons is free for anyone in the world to view. So they do not need to be on Web of Science. So this is public and free. However, to tie these two together, there is a unique researcher ID given to each and every profile. So um, 
each researcher that has claimed their author records here and here, they will get a researcher ID. And there's a synchronization between ORCID and Web of Science. So if you've updated your ORCID information, you will also be synchronized onto uh, Publons. Okay. So just to take note, okay, some of you might be asking about whether we can include non-Web of Science publications. So the Web of Science author records will only show Web of Science documents. The Publons profile, which is public, okay, this one allows you to include non-Web of Science publications. And because we know that for ORCID ID, you're able to put in all publications. So any publications that you've updated here will automatically be updated in Publons. Okay, so I hope this uh, gives you a clear idea of the differences between these profiles that we have. Okay, so I'm going to uh, skip through this slide and go into uh, and show you how you can use um, the profile. So uh, to use the profile, there is an opportunity for you to go to Publons and create a CV for yourself. So there is a, a, a system generated CV that you can pull out by using Publons. And this would showcase all your pub, uh, publication metrics, your papers that you have published, um, your affiliations, as well as your review work. So this becomes your complete uh, researcher CV, and it allows you to uh, send this off to individual evaluators, uh, send, use this for visa applications to work abroad, for promotion, and also for continuing education. Okay. So I've uh, shown this to you earlier on, where this would be uh, but this would be in PDF format. So this is an example of a CV. Okay, You will have your name and your researcher ID, and then your editor records, your review records, and publications. So all this is, will be compiled into a PDF, and it will be downloadable um, for you. Okay, so now I will go into the platforms to show you how to claim your publisher, uh, your, your author record. Okay. So I'll show the author record first, and then later on, I'll go into insights to show you how you can retrieve uh, researcher data from insights. Okay. So if there's anyone who wants to volunteer their name to be searched um, onto, on this uh, for today's session, feel free to type that into the chat, and then I can use your name as an example. But to get us started, okay. oh, that, that's a very fast uh, volunteer already. So. Uh, Jet Sumon, authors, Claire. Okay. I believe you volunteered for the previous session as well. Okay. okay. Search. So you can do a, a quick author search for your name, and then you have your profile here. So there are two uh, records that we found. So if these two are yours, just, dub, just double check, okay? Yeah. So these two are your profiles, I believe. Am I right? If they are both yours, then what you need to do is select both, okay? And then click view as combined record. Okay, once you view as combined record, Click on claim my record. Proceed to claim this record. And it will be taken to Publons. So if you have already have got a Publons um, profile, you can just log in here. Otherwise, there is a, a, an opportunity for you to register. So you can register with your either your institutional email or your personal email. It doesn't matter. Okay, you can just put register here. And once you're done, okay, and then I'm just gonna log in to just show you an example. Okay, so once you have logged in, then the 200 plus uh, the 300 documents that we were previously looking at 
would be ported into your um, uh, dashboard on Publons. So the next thing that you will need to do is go through these 300 records. If you want to select all, you can select all and then click submit and that will link your profile with your documents. Okay, I'm not going to do this now because this is not my paper, so I will not do that. So um, this is just for example to show you how you can claim your papers. So once you have uh, done this step, okay, uh, it will take about 72 hours before you will be given a Web of Science researcher ID. So this researcher ID will be given to you after 72 hours. And once you have claimed that profile, it will appear here as well on your Web of Science author record. Okay. So once you have claimed your author record, this is how it will look like. Okay. You will see your uh, publications and your citation network. So you have a H index of 45. I'm cited 7,436 times. And then these are your author positions. So that means out of the 303 publications, 4% first author, 11% last author, and 7% corresponding author, right? And if, you're, if you want to see your performance, okay, overall in terms of your full career, you are performing at the 72nd percentile. So together with your H index, this becomes your full profile. Okay? If you want to see the details of your author impact beam plot, you can click here to author impact beam plot, and you can see your individual year's performances. So you can toggle between your full career and uh, so on, and you can see how you have been performing. So uh, for Dr. Uh, Jesumon, I think you are very consistent in your performance, okay? And that's how it, you have been placed in the 72nd percentile. So if you want to know each and every uh, paper that this author has published, you can just toggle over each of these dots and you can see how each paper is performing. Okay, so for this one, uh, this paper published in 2019, okay, it has 15 citations, but this puts it in the 92nd percentile uh, in 2019. Okay. okay, so let me just go back to the author search again. Okay, I'm just going to give you an example. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to use uh, this particular profile. Okay, so if you see a green tick in the record, it means that this um, researcher has already claimed his profile and therefore he has this uh, author uh, researcher ID. Okay, um, sometimes you, you might have already claimed the profile, but you have published new documents that have been indexed in Web of Science. It will come up as a separate record. Okay. So in order for you to merge these two together, either you contact us directly via the, our help desk email, or you can go into this record that you have not claimed yet. So click on this one. And then go through that same process again, which is to claim your record through Publons. Okay. So once you have claimed and logged in with that same uh, login with, that you have for Publons in your first uh, record, then it will merge those two together. And the next time you come back, you will only see one um, uh, author record. Okay. okay. So if you click on this uh, claim record, So if on Publons itself, you have updated your picture, um, more details with your uh, review information, all these awards will be reflected on your author record in Web of Science. Uh, and the peer review information would be showing. So for example, the, you have reviewed for all these different journals, uh, and this is your current editorial board membership. Okay. We also have this dashboard that you're able to view. So your author impact being plot now will be on the dashboard and it will show all the publications, 112 Web of Science publications. Okay. 
and then also your review metrics from PubLaunch. We will also include the co your co-authors network. So these are your common co-authors, and if you these are all clickable and viewable as well as a, as a separate record. So this is how you would uh, start claiming your author record, author profile. If you need further help or assistance, uh, there's always a, the help button right here. So there's a help and contact us. You can always contact us to merge by submitting an inquiry. Okay, so this is um, the Web of Science author record and how you can get your own researcher ID. And this is a very, very important step for Mahidon University researchers because if this, if all of you are claiming your records and maintaining it properly, this makes it easier for your administrators to pull out information and data about you. Okay? So if they are using insights, so for example, for insights right here, to access insights, this is um, you have to make sure that you have a uh, ID and password. Okay, uh, if you've missed out on the first two webinars on how to access uh, insights, okay, do reach out to your library, and then they will be able to guide you along. Okay, so on insights, you would be able to pull out researcher information. So one of the um, first use cases for researcher information is if you are from if you are an administrator from Mahidon University and you want to pull out the researcher information of Mahidon researchers, this is how you would start. So go to analyze researchers and choose web of science author record. Make sure you choose the correct date range that you want. So if you need a specific year of publication, we can go to custom year range and set that. Otherwise, by default, it is five complete years, 2016 to 2020. Select whether you want to include ESCI or exclude ESCI. Okay. And you go to affiliated organization. And you put in Mahidon. Update. So now we have the Mahidon University researchers here. There's about 9,532 um, based on the publications from 2016 to 2020. So uh, in terms of the indicators that you want to include for a researcher, we usually put in this view. So we have CNCI, time cited, web of science documents, age index, average percentile, uh, the other indicators that would be useful are here, things like percentage of industry collaborations, international collaborations, corresponding author. Mm. Corresponding author, first author, last author, percentages, and number of documents published in Q1, Q2, and so on. Okay, So for administrative purposes, if these are the data that you need to export out, once your researchers become um, efficient in maintaining their profile on Web of Science, this records here become very clean and is easier and faster for the administrators to pull out data. Okay? Because any of these numbers, so you see here documents in Q1, so for Ko Katsu Yoshi, if your administrator requires uh, an export of all your Q1 documents, documents you publish in Quartal 1 Web of Science journals, they just have to click on this 139 and then download this 139 records. So it becomes very easy to extract that information. Okay. There are other indicators as well that's available. So uh, for example, if you need to find out how many of the documents that are published by Katsuyoshi is last authored, first authored, or corresponding authored, you can still include the absolute numbers right here. So things like first author, last author, corresponding author, and you click on that number and it becomes exportable. Okay, so this just gives you an example. Just include corresponding author. Here, these numbers become exportable. So for example, uh, Sutat, 
20 documents that he is a corresponding author for, then you can export this 20. Okay. Now, you can also use visualizations to compare the researchers. Okay, so the visualizations are available here. Okay, you can choose from all these different uh, visualizations. We have this new uh, graph. This visualization is brand new uh, in the recent week or so, okay, which I haven't managed to show you. This allows you to put in multiple indicators. Okay, so you can put in Web of Science documents. You can also put in CNCI. And perhaps you want to put in uh, hmm, average percentile. Okay. So once you have included that, now you can compare. So for example, if it's the first author, so you can only choose one author. So the first author in this list is Katsuyoshi. Okay. So for Katsuyoshi's documents from 2016 to 2020, okay. He has increased in his documents, okay? increasing number of documents. Okay? But for this period between 2019 and 2016, okay, although the numbers increased, his CNCI has actually declined slightly. Okay? So you can see that it's only within, um, between 2018 and 2019 that his performance has increased. Okay? So this multi-indicator visualization gives you a very good opportunity to compare additional metrics. So you can compare H-index or even Web of Science, CNCI, uh, percentiles, and so on. Okay. Another thing that I have not uh, emphasized on for insights is that if, for example, you need to keep this for uh, reporting purposes, okay, for this multi uh, indicator, we have not yet allowed you to include this into the functionality. Okay, we haven't uh, incorporated the add to report function, but other visualizations here, okay, things like uh, if you want to see trend graph. Okay, so say for example, this trend graph, you want to save this for future references. then you can save this uh, in the other um, uh, uh, other reports. Okay, So if you are talking about organization, location, research, all these, you can actually uh, click on add to report to save the visualization. Okay. okay, so are there any questions from anyone or am I going too fast? Because it, it's your opportunity to ask me as many questions as you want. Uh, with regards to insights data and web of science. Okay. So this is the first option of extracting the researcher's information. Okay. The other way of using researcher information is to identify potential collaborators. So let's say, for example, you want to find uh, the top researcher in a specific field uh, globally. Okay. You can still keep this web of science author record. But now let's remove the filter of Mahidon University. Okay. And now I want to limit, filter this by research area. So out of all these global researchers, I want to find a specific researcher in specific topic. So I'm going to use citation topics as my research area schema. And I want to perhaps go down to the micro level and find uh, our RNA. Okay. Okay. So let's say I have all this uh, micro, RNA, micro RNA. So for micro RNA topic, update result. These are all the researchers globally that are researching on micro RNA. Okay. You can see that this um, researcher from Fudan University published 107 documents for microRNA research. Okay? But you can see that his CNCI is 0 0.74, so slightly before, below global average. Okay? Whereas for this one, Eckert Mies, okay? I, I'm not going to try and pronounce this affiliation, but his publications has put him in the 
uh, 1.94 CNCI, meaning he is performing 1.9 times better than his global peers in this topic of microRNA. So it allows you to quickly find this particular researcher, click on his documents, have a look at his papers. And if you want to view this on Web of Science, you can do so by clicking View in Web of Science. Okay. And then it will appear on our Web of Science page. So I just want to repeat again. So if you want to find someone in a specific research area, okay, make sure you go to researchers, choose Web of Science author record. You can go to research area and filter down to a specific topic. So if you choose meso level, then there is a RNA micro and long long coding RNA and then update results. And this would be all the researchers in this research topic of micro and long long coding RNA. Okay. okay. Now there is a few other final few things that I wanted to highlight. So just wanted to recap um, some of the previous features that I showed you. So for the institutions, so for organizations, if you want to find um, a specific organization, uh, organizations that publish in a specific research area, okay, um, you can use these filters. Okay, organizations 2016 to 2020, and then you limit this by research area again. CDC. Citation topics, you can choose meso, mid-level, then we put RNA and update. Okay. Then these are the um, institutions around the world that is publishing in micro and long non-coding RNA. Then if you need to include any of the indicators, there's uh, a tab here, indicators to include the various ones. So if you're not sure what each of these indicators are, just click into it and there's a small explanation. If you're familiar, just go to add indicators right here on the right and select the ones that you require. Okay. Uh, again, all these data uh, points are downloadable. Okay, those that are in blue numbers, you can click through and there's a table for you to download. Okay. And then if you want to export this data, just click on the drop down arrow here and then you export the columns that you require. Okay. Uh, if you click trend data, it will break down the numbers into each individual years okay, so that you can see the individual years information. Right. And if you have a visualization that you need, okay, go to visual and this you can choose from scatter plots and so on. Okay, uh, multi indicator trend graph, impact profiles. These are some of those that I've shown you um, over the past three webinars. If this is a report that you want to frequently churn, uh, re uh, extract, okay, you can save this and then add to report. Okay. We can create a new report and name this um, benchmarking, okay, and then done. And so you save this as a tile within that report. So you find that report benchmarking Mahidon and then save. And then if you have any other um, reports that you want to put in, so if you uh, want to continue, if you want to look for, say, um, research areas produced by Mahidon, okay, you can go to research areas, research areas here, and then 
start by filtering it down to Mahidon University. So these are all Mahidon's uh, research areas. If you want to keep this as a report, okay, you can uh, include this visualization and then add to report. Areas 2016 to 2020. Okay. Look for that particular one. Benchmarking, okay, and then save. So whichever data that you have you, you have built, okay, you can come back to the report. So you can go to organize. The next time you come back to uh, insights, okay, go to organize and then go to folders. And then go to uh, let's see here. Benchmarking, yeah. So benchmarking Mahidon, this will be the report. So you can retrieve this report and then go to view data and update the information on the uh, depending on the, the frequency that you need this report. Okay. So I can work with you to build a, a, a report that you always need to retrieve on, on a regular basis. Okay, so especially to the administrators at Mahidon University or even the faculty leaders, uh, if there's specific data that you constantly need to retrieve from Web of Science, um, and you don't want to keep repeating the the filtering and the indicators, you can always work with me to build. Um, a standard report like this with together uh, so that um, the next time you can just come back to this report and retrieve whatever information that you want. Okay, so uh, I can work with you with by you providing me with your web of your insights login details and then I can start building this uh, visualization for you in your own folders. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a few, there's one question that came in. What will be the best way to combine information of author name for the author with more than one name? Okay, so for authors with more than one name, uh, I would recommend that you use Web of Science. So on Web of Science, okay, go to author record. If you have an additional name, meaning uh, besides Jetsumon Prachum Sri, if you have an additional name that is completely different, from the, the one that you have now, okay, then type in that, that name. So what is an example of an, an additional name? Um, you can type that into the chat and then I can quickly search for you, okay? But you would search for that specific, that name, um, the additional name that you might have on um, Web of Science and then see whether that profile exists in Web of Science or not, okay? Otherwise, if it's by the article, okay, so you have another name which is Sata Bongkot. Okay, so Sata Bongkot. Okay. And then search. Okay, so this is uh, the, the example earlier on, right? And then, so you can claim this. Okay, so you will already have your own Pablon's um, login. So the next thing is then to search for your other name. Okay, so you have this other one, which is uh, Prachum Sri. Okay, and then search. Okay, so this profile has 13 papers. Okay, check that these 13 are yours, then click on do the same process, claim my record, and then log in with that same Pablon's um, uh, ID that you have. Okay, so ultimately, look for all the varieties of names that you might have on Web of Science, do this claim my record to that same Pablon's profile, and then 
your profile will become merged all together with all the different names. So then your published names will increase in terms of the number of options. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, uh, Dr. Jetsumon. Okay, so uh, let me just quickly go back to my slide. Okay. So what I presented to you today is around how you would, um, how, how you can evaluate a researcher, not just based on page index or citations anymore. Uh, you want to make sure that you include additional metrics like JNCI, CNCI, uh, as well as uh, percentiles of their performance. As a pop, uh, as a way of measuring their their work, okay. and if you are able to claim a profile for herself on Web of Science and Publons, uh, this will then help you to accelerate your research and advance your career. And these are useful in various stages of your uh, work. Okay. So if you are an, a researcher conducting research, you would use those records to find potential collaborators. Okay. And if you are looking to promote your publications, promote yourself, okay, showcasing your author records and tablons will give a show, showcase the full picture of your scholarly contributions. Uh, and this would incorporate things like your number of papers, citations, collaboration network, uh, peer reviewers, and editorial activities all in one place. And then if ultimately you want to obtain funding, Together with the citation inf information on web of science, you are able to also export out a Pablon CV to save time on uh, building your uh, dossier to, to be included into your grant applications. Okay. So I, I understand that today is the last um, webinar that we have. Okay, it, it's uh, last of the series. Okay, I won't say it's the last, but uh, I would look forward to running more webinars with uh, Mahidon University users, but for insights uh, rollout, this would be the final webinar session. Okay, uh, I've included additional links to more resources. Uh, so if you want to learn more about bibliometrics, we have a web of science learning platform that allows you to go in depth into learning about bibliometrics. Okay, so that's uh, helping to answer one of the earlier questions from Dr. Graham Keith Rogers. Okay, uh, if you want to learn more about bibliometrics so that you are able to make use of the indicators and the data from insights more effectively, um, this is where you can go. Okay, uh, Web of Science Academy is something new that we have um, launched. Uh, I think this would be quite useful for researchers. So I just want to quickly show this to you. Okay, uh, currently this platform is free of charge. So anybody from, from Mahidon University can go in uh, sign up for an account so you can enroll and sign in here. And what this does is it will give you access to uh, some e-learning modules that we have. Okay. Uh, we have uh, e-learning module associated with peer review. Okay. So I'm just going to show you my access uh, for now. So this is the Web of Science Academy. Okay, this is just a set, uh, something that we did for Universitas Alanga. So if Mahidon University is keen to partner with us, this is also an additional option for you where the e-learning e platform can, can be customized um, for you. Okay. Uh, on this platform, there are various courses available. So we have a peer review course, okay, peer review skills course, and then we also have a mentoring in peer review um, course. And if we go into all courses, course catalog, um, these are all available. So there's also a good citation behavior um, course available for you. So anybody within Mahidon University can sign up for this um, Boss Academy and then go on to learn about all these different skills. Okay. Then uh, the other links that we have are all here. So you have the events, lib guides, uh, blogs, okay, uh, and highly cited researcher recognitions are all here. Okay. So now we have some time for questions. So I'm going to take in more questions now for the next five to 10 minutes. Okay. 
So there's one question that came in. So in the case of Dr. Jetsugon, when when we analyze an institution, which profile will be included? So all the profiles will be included under the institution. So uh, I believe what you're asking is if you're taking the total of Mahidon, right? That's my insights now. Inside school. So I think your question will be if you're looking at the data for Mahidon University. Okay, so Mahidon. Okay, so you're saying that this total number does that include uh, all of Jet Dr. Jet Sumon's profiles? Yes, it does. Okay, so if you go to find Jet Sumon, so if we go to analyze researchers, that is the reason why we say that there's a there's a need to be very clean in terms of the data. Okay, so let's look. Let's clear this filter first. So what I'm going to show you is this: if I list this as Mahidon. So if I do not use the author record and we try and find um, Sumon, there's three currently, one, two, three. So all these three are part of Mahidon University. Okay, So that is the reason why it is so important that the researchers need to have a clean um, data, clean profile uh, on Web of Science. Okay. It doesn't, this problem does not just confine within Web of Science itself. It, com, it is a problem in any other platforms. If the profile is not clean, if there are many different publishing names, the data that is used for reporting purposes will become unclean. Okay, so that's where the, the next question comes in, which from uh, what Dr. Watip, to clean data is it the job of each researcher? It is, it is a responsibility of the researcher and the institution. I would say it's a shared responsibility. Okay, it's the same thing as, um, for example, your LinkedIn profile. Okay, take take for example your LinkedIn profile uh, that many of us will have, or even your Facebook profile. Okay, whose responsibility is is it? It's because it's something that I I am using to showcase my work. It is something that I use to showcase who I am. So ultimately, I want to make sure that my profile will be clean and accurate. Okay, so that's the reason that's that should be the, the fundamental um, philosophy of updating the, the records for an individual. Uh, the institution can enforce and there are some institutions that enforce this. Uh, one of the example is uh, University of Malaya, for example, they make sure that all their researchers have a researcher ID and make sure all their researchers update their publication information. Okay, But of course, uh, there is still a level of inaccuracy because there could be one or two individuals that do not keep up to date with the, the, the updating of their information. Okay? So um, it's a chicken and egg thing. It's a discussion that and uh, a debate that can go on forever. Okay, but my plea to all the researchers out there is that if you have the opportunity now to make sure that you have a very good profile and clean profile for yourself, it will definitely benefit you. Okay, benefit you in what sense? Because when international re readers look at your problems profile, so for example here, if I look at an institution. Let's look at Mahidon. So let's say I'm I'm somebody looking for uh, a particular university. So Mahidon University now has 367, 376 researchers that have a problems profile. That's not very high. Okay, so I think you can go higher. So if you see Mahidon University, I want to see all their researchers. I want to make sure that I can see them, who they are. 
if all your researchers can have a clean profile like this, make sure and, and everybody can see it, it's good for both the researcher as well as the institution. Okay, so I hope, I hope that that helps with the decision on whether who should be the one who is updating the data. <laughs> all right. Some institutions also uh, enforce that the researchers have to put in a specific publishing name. Um, that's, that's also another way of ensuring that the data that, that goes into our databases become clean. Okay? Uh, but ultimately, if what's done is done, meaning that if there has already been many vari varieties of names you have used before, um, it is of most benefit to you as a researcher if you are the one who is cleaning up that data. Yeah, I, I hope I hope that helps what it. <laughs> okay, is there any other questions from anyone? Because um, we have time for one more question probably. Okay, very good question, uh, Watip. So you you want to put the Pavlon CV of the researcher in my department to website? Uh, yes, so this link, so this Pavlon's uh, URL, you can actually include into the, into the um, department's website, no problem. Yeah. And I believe for each uh, researcher, uh, they have this, so the, the CV is here, so for each individual re uh, researcher, if you want to export your CV, this is where you go to your dashboard, private dashboard, uh, and see your uh, CV. Okay, uh, let's see, profile. Okay, there's a researcher ID batch as well. Okay, so there's a you can generate your own researcher ID batch depending on which one you want. Generate batch. And then you can incorporate this onto your web page. Okay. So if your researchers want to provide this to you, you this is what you can in, incorporate. Otherwise, uh, the URL that I showed you just now should be enough. Okay. So for example, this particular researcher this is a unique res uh, uh, profile for each researcher. So anybody can click on that and immediately see it on uh, Pablons. Okay. Okay. So I hope the this series of webinars has been helpful for all of you. Um, I'm not going anywhere uh, after this webinar series. So if you have any questions, and you need me to work through with you on specific use cases of uh, pulling out institutional reports or researcher reports, just uh, reach out to me via this email address. I'll type it into the chat box as well. Okay, and um, we will look forward to working with you to make it easier for you to access all this information uh, frequently. Okay, so uh, Miss Kanita, back to you. Okay, um, for everyone, um, any question for Dr. Lin? If um, we don't have any question for Dr. Lin, so I think um, I would like to thank for Dr. Lin to giving us um, the very useful training session for Mahido University. I think um, our session is very, very benefit for us because we can um, making benchmarking and also we can um, evaluating researchers performance and also um, we can find the best partner for um, collaborating research for Mahido University. So um, lastly, I would like to thank all um, attendees from Mahido University 
and and um the record will be sent to you all via email and also the slides of Dr. Lin also. So thank you very much for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, see you next time. Stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you so much. สวัสดีทุกท่านนะคะขอบพระคุณมากๆค่ะ